Hi folks, welcome back. This will be probably the uh, last lecture here in uh, PCOM 300. I will be doing some uh, little videos to tell you about some of those uh, projects that we have to do at the end of the semester. But uh, I just for now I want to wrap up here with the Pierce book. And this chapter, you know, again, I've liked this entire book. But, you know, there's just such good advice throughout. And this is really the book... <laughs> <laughs> you ever kind of have that fantasy if you can go back in time and talk to your uh, younger self? You know, if I was ever in that situation, this was the this would be the book I would carry with me and say, just here, younger Matt, take this book, <laughs> read it, memorize it, <laughs> uh, apply this stuff, because uh, it's going to make a big difference. And, you know, I hope you're having that reaction uh, as well. And maybe there's, you know, still plenty of time for you to start implementing uh, this advice. Uh, anyway, we'll be taking a look here. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. You know, you could read it uh, on your own, obviously. But, I, you know, there's a couple of things that kind of struck me that I want to talk a little bit about and get your uh, also interested to see what you think about it. Uh, but, yeah, how to stay motivated, mentally fit, um, how to stay physically healthy. She even covers that a little bit. Not something I was expecting to see, but it's good advice. Uh, and then I want to focus in on that last one, the... Uh, financial strategies because i think that's the one where a lot of folks need the most help you know especially if you're like me coming from a family uh, you know working class background nobody you know i was the first person in my family ever go to college you know basically nobody knew anything about anything uh, you know so i made a lot of bad financial decisions a lot of uh you know obviously didn't end up too badly uh but you know if i had known the stuff that pierce was talking about in that uh, financial chapter, it could have saved myself a lot of pain. <laughs> uh, so hopefully uh, you can apply that as well. All right, Pierce's advice then for mental strength. This is probably the biggest one. You know, if you could, you probably know folks who, you know, you could be extremely smart, you know, have everything else going for you, lots of advantages, lots of uh, uh, privileges, basically. Uh, but yet, if you don't have that proper motivation, it doesn't really matter, does it? You can have all the resources in the world, but if you're not motivated to do anything about it, uh, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, this this tends to be the, the biggest problem. One of the reasons I like to, my approach to teaching, basically, I don't really consider it all that important for me to be, uh, you know, uh, know everything and be like this total expert on all aspects of the, of the content area. Uh, so much as being there to motivate you, uh, motivate students to help them you know, get interested in the topic and find it engaging because you know, once they do that, then they'll start seeking out things on their own. They'll start learning more about the topic and they will certainly remember things more. So in a lot of ways, I think good teaching, a big part of that is uh, motivation. But you don't always have a teacher there. You don't always have a, you know, a fitness coach or a life coach or whatever to uh, do this for you. You know, quite frankly, it's not always uh, affordable or convenient. So there's a couple options that she gives you here. There's things you can easily do on your own. And the one that I have talked about and use myself most often is this motivational speaker category. If you go to YouTube and just type in motivational speeches, you know, there's plenty to choose from. Uh, I found this site called Inspiration Feed uh, where they have the 10 most influential motivational speakers according. I'm not sure how they compiled this information, but these are all ones that I'm familiar with. And so I just thought I would uh, scroll through this and give you a few tips. You know, of course, Tony Robbins here. Let's see. This is why 4% succeed and 96% fail. You know, what I do with these, yes, frankly, uh, you know what? Uh, somebody might really like Tony Robbins and, and, and really, uh, you know, uh, get motivated by listening to him. <laughs> Other folks, it doesn't work. <laughs> And so what I recommend is, you know, go to this site. It's uh, inspirationfeed.com slash motivational hyphen speakers. And uh, don't just pick the first one. You know, you might not like Tony Robbins. That, that's fine. Uh, you, you might, I wouldn't just click on the first one and expect that to uh, be the right one for you. Kind of like anything else, you kind of want to experiment with some different uh, speakers, different videos, and see what, what clicks for you. Uh, for me, the one that I always go back to, sort of my go back to when I need motivation is Eric Thomas. A really good, uh, I think his video, he's got a video here where he's, where he's talking to some kids. About 15 minutes long, he tells a story about a 
a guru and going out into the water and the water getting deeper and deeper. And <laughs> I won't spoil the story for you. <laughs> but he's really powerful for me. I like him. Uh, Les Brown's another one I really enjoy. But, you know, there, there's a lot of variety here. And, and again, I uh, don't oh, look, there's even... I'm kind of curious about it. I haven't listened to Arnold Schwarzenegger's. <laughs> I might do that after I'm done here, listen to his talk. Uh, but anyway, yeah, just just pick a couple different ones. You know, maybe give everyone a couple minutes just to see what uh, uh, what speaks to you. But that's a great way. You know, I like to plug these on uh, when I'm working out. Not to jump ahead to the uh, workout section, but sometimes you don't really feel like working out or you're just not feeling it. Uh, so sometimes you can turn on one of these motivational speakers and that will get you jazzed up. Uh, let's see. Uh, unplugging. Yeah, this is a good one. We spend uh, so much time on these these uh, devices, the phones, the the laptops. You know, especially now when the in this current period that we're we're going through, it seems like we're always on Zoom, always on the computer. You know, it's really nice to be uh, just just turn that off for a while. You know, we have some. I don't know if you're here in St. Cloud or not, but we have some some nice parks you can walk around in. There's Quarry Park, <laughs> uh, my favorite. Very peaceful. It's usually not too crowded if you go there during a weekday. Uh, and just experience nature for a while. Uh, that's really good. Now, she doesn't mention uh, gardening, uh, but I also find that really good. Uh, any hobby that you can get into where there's kind of a long-term reward. So the nice thing about gardening is that you, uh, you know, you plant some seeds, you watch them grow. It's, you know, it's going to be a long time before you get to eat the stuff or uh, see the flowers blooming. So it kind of gives you something to look forward to. And I think that just having things in your life like that, where it's kind of long-term commitment, uh, you know, you come back every day, you check your plants, <laughs> you know, you see them growing, uh, you know, that, that's kind of motivating, kind of exciting. Uh, you know, it gives you, again, something to look forward to. Uh, let's see what else. Vision boards are good. You know, this is something that you can find on, on YouTube as well. Motivational speakers will talk about the same idea. Now, one of the things I do in my classes and we'll do in this class actually is I, I, I call it kind of an aspirational resume. Uh, so what I get students to do is write a resume, but don't write it based on your current, you know, situation, your current experience. Uh, think about what you would like to have uh, on a resume, like a really good, uh, solid set of goals uh, that you could make that would really help you to get that job. Uh, so write that resume, write that winning resume that's going to get the job, and then figure out, okay, how can I actually get these skills that I'm talking about? How can I get these experiences, these awards, you know, you know, whatever the case may be? Uh, and I find just having some some nice, uh, realistic goals like that can be very motivating. And uh, again, you're, you're just trying to take these big goals, big ambitions, and think of ways you can div divvy that up into small steps that you can reasonably get to over the course of a year or two. Uh, reading, <laughs> yeah, read more books. This, this Pierce book is just one of probably hundreds of books like this you could find and read. You know, I always try to have at least at least one book I'm working on, uh, off and on. I, I pick books sometimes just for fun. <laughs> but you don't always have to have this big uh, educational goal in mind. Um, but just something to, uh, you know, stories that you can get into, good authors. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to say really to me, it matters less to me when I'm talking to students. Uh, you know, if you're reading, if you like Twilight, uh, read Twilight. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong in my mind with that, uh, or Harry Potter, you know, all the rest. It's just uh, this act of reading in and of itself, I think, is helpful for your mind. Uh, but it really is, I think, better when you can find good stuff to read, <laughs> where you're, you know, learning useful information, you're reading uh, motivational, inspirational stuff. Uh, that, that tops everything. And I know some of you have talked to you and you're, you know, I see the comments. I know a lot of people are doing that. Uh, journaling, another good, good tactic. Uh, if you can keep a journal on your computer pretty easily. Uh, the, the phones, you know, this would be a good use for your phone. Just at the end of the day, you can open up that. There's an app on there called like a memo or voice recorder, something like the voice memo. And just, you know, talk to it for a while about, you know, what you're doing, uh, how your day went, you know, keeping notes uh, like that, workouts, motivational speeches, you know, just keeping a little list like that uh, could be really helpful, you know, especially later when you can go back and review and, you know, see uh, what was working, what didn't work. It's just basically just keeping notes about your day. Uh, know when to get help. Yes, number six is a good tip uh, for anybody. 
You know, again, sometimes it's not just a matter of, you know, a lot of people think, well, I just feel lazy or I'm, I'm sad about something, uh, you know, and you feel like, you know, it's, it's no big deal sometimes and you just kind of let that fester for a long time and it just gets uh, worse and worse when really, uh, you know, there, there comes a point where you need to uh, reach out and, and talk to somebody uh, to try to figure out, you know, how you can get back on, uh, back on track towards your goals. Uh, this could be something academic. You know, we have academic advisors, which I do, but, you know, that's not the, that, that could be the type of advising you need, but sometimes, frankly, we need uh, other, uh, basically, therapists, you know, to talk to or counselors. And again, these come in all range of uh, types and strategies and exercises, ways they can work with you. Kind of like that motivational speaking uh, thing I was telling you about. Uh, so there's certainly nothing wrong with, uh, uh, going to, uh, let's see, what is the, I should have written down the name of the, the office, but here on campus we have a counseling, and, and let me just pause this really briefly so I can give you the, the name. Okay, here we go. This is Counseling and psych Psychological Services, and you can see self-help. Uh, now, a lot of this is, you know, the problem I, I see with, with this uh, point that Pierce is trying to make is a lot of us, we, we kind of think of this, uh, counseling or psychological or therapy is just like something for like absolute emergencies. Um, <laughs> you don't go unless you're just, you know, in really bad shape or something like that. And that, that's really not the right attitude. It's kind of like what she'll say about the physical doctors. You know, you, you sometimes you could just get a checkup, you know, go in and talk. You don't necessarily have to have this big crisis uh, going on to, uh, you know, put your, dip your toe in the water, so to speak, see what... Uh, is available and uh, really just take advantage of it. I mean, to me, you know, I, I've gone to uh, therapy, you know, several times. No no real big problems or anything. It's just nice to be able to sit down and talk to somebody uh, to get those external views. And, and really, frankly, they are professionals at helping people stay motivated. <laughs> All the stuff we've been talking about, <laughs> uh, they can uh, help you. And plus, you can... Uh, a lot of times uh, they can help you to help others, which is kind of cool. If you have a family, uh, you can go to a therapist or a counselor and, uh, you know, get help helping others. So just all, I, I just highly recommend this. Try not to think about getting help as being like this last ditch, you know, emergency thing or only good for, uh, you know, certain types of people or, you know, try to get rid of all those misconceptions because it's a really useful thing. Uh, bodily health. Uh, you know, lots of tips about this. Yeah, the getting insurance. You know, a lot of this stuff, you know, we're going to have to come back to when we get to the financial section because it kind of ties into that. Uh, I mean, the problem is, you know, a lot of us, we're, especially just starting out, you don't have a lot of money. Uh, you're put, you've been putting things off. I mean, I didn't, for example, uh, go to a dentist for many, many years. I, I, basically, once I started uh, <laughs> college, I never... I was able to afford any of that stuff, and then when I got my got this this job, actually, this is the first time I had like a plan, uh, health insurance, and dental insurance. I was, <laughs> you go to the dentist, and they're like, "Wow, you know, this has been many years, and I had all these cavities, and just all this work had to be done." You know, it sure would have been nice to get a bit of an earlier uh, start to that. Uh, but yeah, even if you're doing freelance type stuff, a lot of people think, "Well, I don't need health insurance. I'm perfectly healthy. You know, I'll just put some money." You know, if worse comes to worse, I'll deal with it then. Uh, the problem is it's too late at that point. You know, that's the reason to have insurance, right? You, you can't wait until you have a, kind of like, you know, exa exactly what we're talking about with this knowing when to get help. Uh, you don't want to wait until you have a crisis and then try to get insurance because you know, it won't be available at that point. You know, the point is you get this stuff as a, as a well, as insurance. <laughs> as a you know, very definition of the word so that you have it. And if you, if you have it and you don't need it, okay, that, that's a better situation to be in than to need it and then not to have it. So I absolutely agree with her on that. Uh, learning how to cook is fun. Uh, a lot of us, we don't really learn much about cooking. Uh, my grandma actually insisted on this. You know, she's like, I don't care what, what you think about this. We're going to, you're going to work with me in the kitchen. I'm going to show you how to make all this, you know, basic food stuff. <laughs> And so she kind of forced me to learn how, you know, to cook at least the basics. And so I, I learned from her, but I also learned from, um, and there's a service you can get. Let me get the name for you. Oh, Blue Plate. There, I remember that. <laughs> so you get these uh, Blue Plate meals, and what happens, they send you like a, 
a box with all the ingredients in there and the recipes. Uh, it's a little bit expensive, you know. It, it, it costs a little bit, but I kind of write it off. The way I think about it is I'm learning something. You know, and you can want you don't have to always get the blue plate meals. You know, once you know how to make the dish, you could just buy those ingredients on your own. Uh, but the idea is it's kind of expanding your uh, range a little bit, so you're cooking, working with some some foods and ingredients that you don't normally. You know, you might go to a grocery store and you're like, "What the heck is that vegetable? <laughs> I, I don't know what the heck I'm supposed to do with this eggplant, you know, or whatever the case may be." And so those blue plate meals, uh, and those kind of a way to break it down and, and help you to experiment kind of tying into this third point too so eating things that are not featured on the kids menu <laughs> so, uh, so well, you know my wife is bad about this it's just like it's always like chicken nuggets uh, you know wherever we go like come on you don't want chicken nuggets and mac and cheese you're a grown woman you're like 40 years old <laughs> you, should, you should really be uh, eating like vegetables you know, and I'm not the I'm not putting her down. I'm not the best at this either. I'm just liable to go for a hamburger or something. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to start experimenting, uh, trying out new foods, especially healthy foods, more vegetables. A lot of us just eat way too much uh, uh, junk, basically, a little too much uh, convenient food or, or fast food. Uh, sometimes uh, you might you know you might end up liking things you. Uh, wouldn't think that you like. I uh, really like Brussels sprouts, roasted Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Never thought I would like that. You know, I just uh, had a friend who was kind of practicing these uh, these tips, and uh, he's like, I mean, you know, Matt, I bet you've never had Brussels sprouts except boiled to death from a can, right? And he, yeah, sure enough, that was the case. He said, let me roast these for you, and then you can try it and tell me what you think. And, and I really enjoyed those. <laughs> so I've been uh, eating them ever since. Uh, so again, it's just, you know, trying to increase your vegetables, trying to eat more uh, nutritious food. It's not that hard to do, and it'll uh, pay off in big dividends. Uh, working out, another one, this could be as simple as just taking a walk, you know, getting outside. You know, a lot of people think they got to hit a gym real hard and heavy every day, join a Gold's Gym or something. And, you know, it's kind of overkill. A lot of people do this, uh, you know, New Year's resolution. I'm going to jo join a gym and work out. 40 hours a week or something. Uh, you know, you might keep up with that for a week or two, and then it gets old, and then you get other stuff comes up, and, you know, you're not, not doing it anymore. Uh, so what I like to do instead of that is the sort of baby step up. You know, so you start with, like, something really easy that's just so easy to do. It's no trouble at all. Like, you know, maybe just walk around the block every night. Uh, and that's just uh, make a habit of that, you know, and then once you kind of get that as a habit, then you can start adding on some extra exercises and things. Uh, but I think really the key is just start small and, and build up from there. Don't try to do like this eight-hour-a-day uh, workout. And same thing with dieting and, and, and uh, eating the nutritious food. Don't try to make these drastic changes all of a sudden. And it'll never happen. Uh, just try to gradually uh, improve. You know, maybe just add a little vegetable meal, <laughs> maybe once a week. <laughs> uh, don't do the fast food at all. Just stick purely to, you know, healthy foods. And then if that's okay, then add another day. Uh, to that menu and so on. Uh, yeah, sleep is a big one. And I've talked to a lot of people about this, just the importance of sleep. Uh, you know, you get stressed out, you get anxious about stuff, you can't solve a problem, you don't know what to do about a paper, whatever the case may be. As so you get all worked up and you're all freaked out about it. And if you just would go to sleep and, you know, get that eight to 10 hours of uh, sleep, better to have too much sleep than not enough, in my opinion. A lot of times you wake up and the problem just doesn't seem like that big of a deal as it did the night before. Uh, or, you know, suddenly, like ment mentally, overnight, subconsciously, you figured out a solution. I mean, how many times have you jumped up out of bed and like, oh, no, I know what to do. <laughs> it was, why didn't I see that? You know, there was a different approach to the problem. You know, I just should have went to bed and figured it out. And plus, you know, they've shown how much sleep helps with all the other things, your motivation, you know, if you're really sleepy, you're not getting enough sleep. That's going to affect motivation. It's going to affect retention. So you're not remem you're not remembering things very well. Uh, you're not thinking clearly. You know, everything just just goes to goes to heck after a while. Uh, you know, especially with if you're in the 
you know, I don't know what, what it's like now, but, you know, when I was in college, it was always this temptation. Let's just go out every night. <laughs> yeah, not, let's not drink water. Let's, like, drink a whiskey, tequila, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you have to, like, two or three in the morning every night, and then you're trying to get up and go to class, and, you know, everything just starts to, 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 go, uh, to go south in a hurry. So you really want to temper those things. And again, I don't think anybody, I don't think Pierce would say you got to be this total saint, you know, this this angel, like, you know, be doing everything just goody goody all the time. You know, obviously you got to let loose from time to time. Uh, it's just a matter of not doing it all the time, right? And working in some moderation. Uh, okay, finances. Uh, this is really where the gold is, literally. Uh, the stuff I wish I had thought more about. Uh, by creating a budget. You know, this always seemed kind of uh, superfluous to me, basically, when I was in, in college, because I felt like I got no money. You know, the only, I, just, I'm destitute, I'm poor. <laughs> Why do I want to keep reminding myself of this? <laughs> How can I save any money? You know, I've got literally just no money. Uh, every dollar has to go for, like, food and rent, and, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, but nevertheless, even back then, I should have tried uh, to do this, if for no other reason uh, than to say, uh, is there something I can cut? Can I, can I not get into even more debt than is essential here? You know, is, is there some way to save money? Uh, so that's a, that's a big one, and especially once you get your first real job. You know, unfortunately, the temptation is, uh, okay, now i got a, a real salary. I'm going to go out and get a you know, big house, a big car, and you know, do all, make up for lost time. And next thing you know, you're, you're in so much debt and you're paying some, you get, your bills are so high, you might, you might as well still be in that poverty uh, situation from, uh, from college, just living uh, from check to check. You know, I, you know, people are like some of my good friends, you know, colleagues here, and that's exactly what they did wrong. Uh, so a much better strategy would be to say, look, okay, here's how much money I got coming in. You know, I'll set aside this amount of money. And you want to be a little bit... Um, you know, more uh, liberal than you might think. So like food, uh, entertainment, you know, and all these uh, other things, the, the essentials first, and then start thinking about what you might be able to put aside. And the saving money is the hardest thing, I think, for young people, because you want to spend money. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I totally get that. Uh, but yeah, Pierce is right. I think she says, even if it's like 20 bucks, you know, put, the, put that aside to, a, you know, get a savings account. Uh, the usual recommend re the usual recommendation is to have three months of living expenses uh, in the savings account, you know, and try not to ever touch that. You know, try to see that as like a sacro a sacred sacrosanct amount of money, uh, only to be used in a legitimate uh, emergency. And so you try to get that built up first, and then after that, then we can start talking about some of these other uh, options, you know, for investing investing money and, and whatnot. Uh, but those are big. And especially at this stage, you know, when you're just starting out, and again, you got all this massive debt. I mean, I was just hopeless. I mean, I felt like I was never going to get out of debt, uh, you know, when I got out of college. I mean, just massive amount. Uh, so what I had to do, I just, uh, I didn't quite follow this advice, but I tried to create this budget. And I remember thinking, uh, you know, I need to figure out where my uh, high interest debt is and it was like these credit cards I'd, I'd had all these credit cards and i'd take out the cash advances to be able to pay my rent and car note and things with the cash advance so i was like paying just an incredible amount of uh, interest on these credit cards so i worked on those first got we got you know my wife and i actually worked together on the, these budgets so you know we got she was a lot she's a lot smarter with money than i am <laughs> and so she was uh played a huge role in this uh but nevertheless we got those finally got those high interest things uh, paid off and then we started working on the college loans and you know finally got out of uh you know completely out of debt uh, which that was amazing <laughs> and then started thinking about you know saving and then start being realistic about a mortgage on a on a house and uh all that stuff you had to put it on paper basically is the, is the advice uh three if your employer offers retirement matching plans go for it yeah, so this is a kind of another big mystery. And you know, this is, again, another one of these advantages, privileges, really, that if you come from a wealthy family and your college-educated parents, you know, they'll be able to tell you all this stuff and make sure you don't go all right. But if you're like me, again, coming from, <laughs> you know, growing up in a uh, down a dirt road in Louisiana somewhere, 
uh, they don't know about this stuff. So nobody's there to advise you, and you don't really know what you're doing. Uh, but So you just kind of have to learn it from a book or learn it from a class like this. So what happens when you start these jobs? There'll usually be a 401k plan, or they'll be talking about these different options for retirement. And it might be that the plan they set you up with may not be the best for you. Uh, a lot of times what happens is they won't set it up so that you're well, let me put it this way. So the, the employer will say, uh, you know, if, if we're, we're going to take so much out of your check to go into a retirement fund of some sort, and up to a certain amount will match that fund. So let's just say they take out $100 from your check, and then they'll say, well, if you do that, we'll put in another $100 uh, into the fund to, to sort of match what you're contributing. Uh, so you need to figure out what is the maximum you can put in, and you definitely want to be using it some, uh, again, over the course of a lifetime. And if you're starting off uh, relatively early, this will be uh, great. Uh, you have a lot of money by the time you retire. Uh, but, you know, if you're up in age and there's not that many years, then you really want to uh, be putting in, all, you know, as much as possible. Uh, and then the, there'll be gradation or different levels of, like, risk you're willing to take. And so a lot of the times they'll uh, just have everybody set up on, like, this normal amount of risk. So, so much in stocks, so much in bonds. But... The problem with that is, and we'll get into this here in a second, if you, uh, the less risk you take, uh, the less money you'll make, basically. You can lose uh, more with higher risk, but you'll also uh, win more. And the, the reason that I, it's usually better to take on more risk when you're young is that time is the equalizer. So the more time you have, the more likely you are to do well, because uh, this, this averages out, basically. So if you only got a few years, you know, obviously you don't want any risk at all um, because you don't want to, you know, take a huge loss, like right before you're ready to retire. That would be <laughs> pretty, pretty terrible. Uh, but if you're like 20 and you take a big loss, eh, so what? You know, it'll, you know, another few years, that'll be uh, covered. And then you have the that back and, and then some. So you really want to talk to somebody uh, about your options and figure out uh, what, what's going to work for you. Uh, the credit score, you know, this is, I would just, if I could go back in time, I would just say, Matt, give me those credit cards, <laughs> rip them up, never touch them. <laughs> I'll never, ever buy anything with a credit card again. Uh, just me personally, uh, you know, if I, if I want it, I'll save up and get it. <laughs> I probably sound like your mom or your dad at this point. <laughs> you know, it's really true. Just don't fall for those things. Uh you know, people will tell you all kinds of crap, like, oh, well, you need to, you know, get a credit card so you build up a credit score. They, forget it. You know, they uh, not worth it. I don't care what people say. Uh, you, you don't want to get saddled in a bunch of debt, and it's just too tempting when you got that credit card to just go ahead and buy something, uh, even though you can't afford to pay it. And then you got all these monthly installments, you know, that's how they get you, uh, basically. So I'd just say no to the credit don't borrow money unless it's just absolutely necessary and if it's for something that's going to uh, pay off. So, for example, if you got to borrow money to go to college, uh, that's a lot better because at least you'll get the college degree and this is something that will, in theory, at least help you to make money later. Uh, if you're borrowing money, though, to you know buy uh, unnecessary items or just to have an added on the town or for a vacation or something, uh, much less... Uh, useful because then that money will just be burned. You'll burn through it. You won't get any um, anything out of that. And then now you're paying off uh, the debt. Uh, so that'll that vacation will be a lot less fun. You know, six months later when you're still paying off the you know the the credit card or whatever. Now learning how to invest is a is probably the best thing you could do. You know, it might seem like a pie in the sky at this point, but uh, I would the things that I would do. I know I've mentioned that Great Courses Plus series a few times. Uh, they have some great uh, lecture series you can watch about investing. There's one about famous investors. There's one's about building up a nest egg. And they tell you about all the stuff with the stocks and the bonds and the, you know how to uh, you know get all that started. The thing that makes it uh, compelling, though, for you is, is really the sooner you get started with investing, the better off you'll be. Uh, again, because time is your friend. Uh, it's really hard to make a lot of money on the stock market if you've got just like a year or just a few months. You know, if you're trying to make money on the stock market, you know, from a, like a day-to-day -day basis, that's very difficult. You're probably not going to work. <laughs> you're probably going to lose money. 
Uh, but if you're talking in terms of like years, uh, now it starts to get really good. Uh, it's a really good thing. You're probably going to uh, see some pretty good returns. Uh, so again, the sooner you get started with it, the better. Now, I'm not going to delve real deeply into it. I'm just going to tell you some stuff you might consider. And they always say with the, you know, when you're given uh, advice about stocks and things, you got to be careful with it because you don't want people to uh, uh, lose money. And they, you don't want people to go out and buy stocks and, and then it doesn't work out and then they try to blame you. And you say, well, you told me to buy that stock. You told me to buy this and that. Uh, so I'm not going to give you any advice like that. I'm just going to tell you some quick and dirty things that I would do. Uh, again, or this is stuff I actually do, <laughs> and uh, it uh, doesn't cost a lot to get started with this. This is a Robin Hood app. It kind of gets a bad rep sometimes, but, but I like it just because it's free to set up an account. You have to have a bank account, and then you can uh, start investing relatively quickly. But you could uh, spend a lot of time learning about different stocks, different companies, and that sort of thing, but typically it, it doesn't really, unless you really dive into it and, and do the research, you're probably going to end up getting burned uh, with that. Uh, the option uh, that I suggest is called, uh, looks like it's getting cut off a little bit there at the top, uh, but there's these things called, uh, let me see if I can zoom in, yeah, there we go. Uh, there's these things called ETFs, an index ETF, and I'm not going to go into all of what that means, but basically it's just the average out, or they pick a whole bunch of different uh, stocks or different companies, and they sort of put a little bit of money into each one, or they kind of divvy up all the resources across those, uh, you know, those funds. So basically what happens is you sort of average out the risk, because if you got all these different companies that you're invested in, and let's say one of the companies goes bankrupt, Okay, that's bad, uh, but maybe one of the other companies had a really, really good year. All right, uh, so this the idea is it kind of uh, across all those different companies, it's really a diversified thing, and so you're kind of mitigating uh, the risk a little bit. But see, like uh, here, this is the probably the most famous ETF. Uh, this is SPDR, S&P. You've probably heard about the S&P 500. And so this is uh, a way to uh, invest in that. And you could see on a, this is a, like on a day, you can see it was up at 394. Now it's all the way down to 393. You know, it might not sound like a lot of money. Uh, oh, another nice thing about Robinhood is you can invest in dollars instead of shares. Uh, what that means is I could just go in and say $10 or five bucks. You know, whatever I got, you don't have to have these thousands and thousands of dollars uh, to do it. So see, even when, <laughs> as I'm talking, it's going down a little bit. So you get kind of freaked out if you only have like a day and you're trying to make a trade in the day. But if you go out to like a week, uh, you can see, okay, it started there at 392 and it ended up at 393. So it kind of went up a little bit, you know, 0.4% just in the, in the week. But if you go to like a month, then you see, okay, it's up 1% over the month, you know, and so on and so forth. But the ones that you really want to be looking at is like the one year and five years. So you, you really want to be thinking about at least a year, because if you try to sell a stock like this before the year is up, you have to pay more taxes on it. If it's, if it's more than a year, I'm giving you way too much information here, I realize that, but <laughs> it's just some, you know, again, stuff I wish I had known. But like if you uh, just went, if you did nothing but like come here and like put uh, five bucks into this ETF and didn't touch it, you know, and came back five years later, you'd probably see more than likely a pretty good result on that. So this is the uh, one of them. There's another one called the uh, QQQ or the NASDAQ. You probably hear about this one. This one's more tech oriented. But you can see once you get out to like five years, so this one's going up 200%, you know, over five years versus the uh, spider, which went up only 100% uh, over five years. And then we got one more here, the Dow Jones Industrial. You can see that one's gone up about 90%. So the what you're looking at here again is this idea of risk. How much risk do you want? Um, the NASDAQ one, if you look carefully at that, uh, at this uh, graph, you could see how, well here, you know, what happened here of course was the uh, uh, pandemic. <laughs> so that uh, you know crashed everything. Uh, so if you just kind of blank that little bit out, you know, stuff like that doesn't happen very often, thank God. Uh, but you could see normally it would be kind of going up pretty steadily. 
Uh, the NASDAQ one, you know, this is a, a pretty interesting one. What you what I kind of look for, I look carefully at these lines, and I don't I don't like to see a lot of you know radical moves. You know, this one look it looks like it's a bit higher than where it would should be to me, just looking at the chart. <laughs> you know, it seems like it should be more like around there. So I don't know. You know, this one might who who knows what might happen to that one. So but that's what I'm saying. Like if you want the two hundred percent return, you gotta be willing to take that bigger risk. If you're okay with these smaller returns, again, 94% though over five years, you know, the, basically your five bucks is going to be 10 bucks, you know, by, by the end of that. So anyway, I won't go over that any longer. <laughs> I can really get excited about it. Um, but yeah, you know, you start putting five, 10, 20s, 100, whatever you got. You don't even really have to look at how it's doing on any particular day or wait for a sale or anything. Uh, just put a little bit in and then don't don't touch it, you know, and come back over the years, you know, five years later, by the time you're uh, ready to cash those in, you know, chances are you have quite a bit of, uh, you know, quite a bit of money that you didn't have. And basically just money for nothing, <laughs> just for the trouble of clicking a few buttons. All right, uh, diversify, there, uh, diversify your income. Uh, last bit of advice there. That's good, too. And again, I, I tie this into the f fifth one. Because uh, a lot of people just think in terms of their salary. Uh, they're like, well, I'm making 50000 or sixty or $70,000. That's what I'm working with. You know, that's my, that's my income. And they just think about that alone when they really need to be thinking about, okay, I need to invest some of that money or I need to get, some, get into some sidelines or, you know, figure out some other way to get some money coming in. Um, you know, experimenting, moonlighting, whatever, whatever you want to call it. It's good to have multiple uh, things going. Uh, just me personally, not like I'm the world's expert on this or, or anything, but uh, you know, I try to have a lot of money coming in from my investments, uh, money coming in from my uh, YouTube channel. You know, I'm always like my books that I write. You know, I get royalties on those. I get uh, you know Patreon support from my YouTube channel. You know, there's anything like that uh, you can do just to kind of you know experiment and always just say if you're going to have a hobby anyway. <laughs> You know, why not try to find a hobby that might, you know, pay back a little bit, or at least not be something that's just all cost all the time. You know, if, if there's something you can do with it um, where you can either, it can, it'll either pay it for itself, or you might actually save some money with a hobby. Uh, you know, it's, uh, that to me is the ideal. You know, they call, call me crazy, but, you know, kind of like having some money, <laughs> and it's really nice <laughs> when you can be having some fun and making some money, even if it's just a little bit of money. You, you know, that that's a... Uh, and that's a great way to go. You know, if you're playing video games all the time and you like to play the games, why not look into like Twitch streaming or something? And you might make a couple of bucks uh, doing that. Who knows? All right, so that's about it for this. I hope you uh, enjoyed this. I'd love to know your tips. You know, what if you, I know some of you are actually professional, uh, you know, business people. You probably have a lot more insight than I do on these things. So if you, uh, you know, have any information you'd like to share, alternative viewpoints, or if you just like, uh, you know what Pierce says, love to hear from you on that as well. But anyway, I will wrap it up here and I'll see you next time.